Hey knitters, welcome to the Knitty McPearly podcast and my porch. We are here. Let me see. I hope you can hear me sufficiently. Maybe if I move in a little bit. How's that? Welcome. I am your host, Evan Bentry. You can find me at knittymcpearly.com. I am Nitty McPearly on Instagram. And if you want to email me, I'm Devin at knittymcpearly.com. Are we crooked? Okay. All right. I think it's good. Are you happy? I'm happy. I'm on the porch. I'm actually on the back porch. It's my second favorite porch. The front porch is my favorite, but my daughter was already out there working on schoolwork. So I came back to the back porch. Um, it is confirmation graduation week here. If you are following me over on Instagram, if you don't follow me at Devin Ventry, go and request. It's a private account, but you guys can follow me. I just don't want creepy people following me and looking at pictures of my family. So um, go over there and check that out if you want and just request it and I will confirm you. Uh, but it's been super busy, confirmation, graduation. It's a lot of stuff. Um, the house is clean. Family party is tomorrow. It's gonna be too loud. Yeah, so it's been a little crazy around here. We've been really, really busy. So um, if you place an order and it hasn't gone out yet, it will go out on Monday. So a lovely podcast watcher named Sharon sent me a Georgia mug. Isn't this mug so cute? And on the back, it's got all of these fun facts about Georgia. It was admitted to the Union in 1788. Capital is Atlanta. The bird is the brown thrasher. That sounds cool. Flower is the Cherokee rose. The tree is the live oak. The motto is wisdom, justice, and moderation. All good things, good virtues. Nickname is the Cracker State. That's interesting. And it was the fourth state admitted to the Union, uh, one of the 12 original colonies, as is Virginia. Uh, thank you so much, Sharon. That was so sweet. Sharon also sent me these lovely Georgia peach earrings. Aren't those pretty? They're like clay. So nice. You guys don't have to send me anything, but when you do, it's so sweet. And these knitting note cards and some peach honey. It's very peach themed. <laughs> But when you think of peaches, you think of Georgia, right? Thank you so much, Sharon. That was so kind of you. I, I actually counted them up and I have 18 out of 50 states. Do you want to hear the states I don't have? I don't have Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, California, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Maine, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Mexico, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, that's crazy, West Virginia or Wisconsin. Those are the mugs I do not have. So if you live in one of those states and you would like to contribute to my state mug collection, that would be amazing. Um, send me an email and I will tell you where to send it. Thank you guys for sending me mugs. It's so sweet of you. Pretty soon I'm gonna have all 50. It's awesome. Okay, progress and shop news. Today is a big day. I'm actually drinking just out of this can. <laughs> I'm not even drinking out of one of the mugs today. I haven't washed this yet. Probably Sharon washed it. Oh, she also included some progress keepers and these little, where you stick them on the end of your needles so you don't lose your yarn. So sweet. Anyway, I'm also drinking water out of my Colorado mug. Thanks, Julie and Deb. <laughs> anyway, progress and shop news. Big news for this weekend is that the advent calendar pre-order is live. It will be up for probably about a week or until they sell out, which usually takes about a week. So um, the theme is creator of the universe. And I mentioned on the last podcast, that they were pictures from the Hubble telescope, but the Hubble is now outdated. There's a new one. I think they brought the Hubble back, pretty sure. And the new one out there is the James Webb telescope and it's just better. Like it's just scientifically superior. The technology's gotten better since they originally put the Hubble out. And so a lot of these pictures are from the James Webb. Um, there's so much beautiful stuff out there and God made all of it. And I used to, I used to think that God made 
all that stuff for us because we would find it interesting. And that's maybe true. But now I think that God made it just because he's essentially creative and that's just what he does. Kind of like knitters, right? Like he must create. And he makes galaxies that are like amazing and gigantic. Anyway, pulsars and nebulae and quasars and star clusters. These are all such beautiful things. And I thought it would be awesome to do a surprise fade that goes from dark to light as we proceed from December 1st to Christmas, because Jesus is the light of the world. And it will essentially be 25 20 gram minis. So that's 500 grams of yarn, which is 2,185 yards. So for most sweaters, that's a sweater quantity. Maybe even a little more, depending, you know, if you're making a small sweater or a big sweater, there's different types of sweaters, different sizes of sweaters. You could make it into a sweater if you wanted to. You could make it into a shawl. It'll come with a free download of a Nitty McPearly scrappy pattern if you want to go that route. Chips, mid-November, if you order an advent calendar with other stuff, place two separate orders so that I can ship your other stuff now and your advent calendar in November when the time comes. Also new in the shop is June's <gasps> color of the month. Put it in the best sideboard. Isn't it fabulous? So this is inspired by the porch. It's mainly pink and green. It's like a candy pink and a candy green, but it has all manner of speckles. Like it's all the colors. I did so many different colors in the speckle. And I thought it would be nice if I showed you kind of what it went with. Oh, before I do that. So here it is in DK. This is June's color of the month in DK. I still have a few skeins left of May, not very many. So if you want those, go get them because when they're gone, they're gone. Here it is in DK. Here it is in the fingering weight and the sock set. So great, right? It just reminds me of like flowers and apples, green apples and just fresh, pretty stuff. Uh, but I thought it went really well with, of course, Meadow and Jovis and Fontaine. It's not the same pink as in Fontaine, but I love it. That looks super good. And even Barrel because of the speckles in there. And you could even pair it. It wasn't my first choice, but because of the speckles, you could even pair it with uh, Poirot or River Rock or Roxette. I didn't bring them up here because it was too many to carry, but uh, these were these were my top picks. Like this would just make a gorgeous faux set, wouldn't it? Lots of people are making the faux set. I saw a lady in some European languages are very similar to each other. And so I can't distinguish them. Uh, it looked like German to me, but I wasn't 100% sure that it was German. And she had just cast on a faucet and she was so excited. And she's like, oh, but there's so many baubles. And I was like, you know, you can skip the baubles if you want to, but they're fabulous and you should keep them in because they are so great. Okay, also new in the shop is the porch balm. Oh my gosh, this balm smells so good. This is in like, like I like all my balms. I wouldn't make them if I didn't like them, but this is in the top level of balms. It's geranium and lavender, a little bit of lemongrass, not very much, and a little bit of clove, not very much. Mm. It's just beautiful. It smells so, so good. So I have a lot of them in the tins. Right now, I only have a couple in the sticks, but there will be more coming. I'm making more in the sticks. So if you want the two ounce tin, you can go and get that anytime. The sticks are gonna sell out in a hot second, but don't worry, I will have more coming. Okay, let's talk about the Summer Vibe Knit Along. Um, I was a little ambitious in giving us only a month to knit this pattern. And some of you didn't even like get your yarn set until 
into May. So I was being a little stingy. I apologize for that. As a result, I only have one finisher, but I have one finisher. This is from Vaughn. Vaughn is the lovely Texas knitter who made me this mug rug. And she made this gorgeous summer vibe top. It just looks so beautiful. It's so vintage looking. I love it. She used one of my kits. So she and I are going to be twinsies. And one thing I love is that she picked up around the armholes and did a little armband. And I love that. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do it. I'm probably going to sew it all together and put it on and see how I feel. But I love that idea. I just think it looks really finished and pretty. Just such a pretty top. I'm so excited. There's a bunch of us who are going to be twinning, but literally there's only one finisher right now. So I've decided to extend the knit along to the first day of summer. Someone on Instagram suggested that, and I thought that is perfect for the summer vibe knit along to take it to the first day of summer. This year, the first day of summer is June 20th. So that's our new date to finish. If you didn't finish, don't worry, you still have time. Um, I have made almost no progress. I am just slightly over halfway on the back and it's just been a crazy week. Finishing exams and finishing school and confirmation and trying to get everything ready for the graduation and the graduation party. It's been a lot. So um, this is all I got done. I really did like, I think two stripes. I did the yellow and the pink and that's it. So I too will be using the extension to finish. And I started before everybody else even. I have no excuse. Okay, and you know what's funny is um, in the comments, I read a bunch of your comments that talked about the baby blanket that I cast on. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot all about that. What? So yeah, I didn't have any time to work on that at all. Okay, moving along to the topic of the week. So... I was watching the news about the Trump trial this week and Harmeet Dillon comes up. She's, I think, on Trump's legal team, I'm pretty sure. And I'm looking at her and I'm going, that's a hand knit sweater. Cause we know, right? Knitters know. Have you ever been somewhere and you're wearing a sweater that you bought at a store or your, your child or your husband or somebody is wearing a sweater that you bought at a store? And to you, it's very obvious that this is a store-bought sweater. And someone will, someone very well-meaning will say, oh, did you knit that? One time our priest said that. He said, oh, did you knit that sweater? My son was wearing it. He was like three. And I was like, father, look. And I, I turned it inside. I'm like, do you see these seams? <laughs> Which, of course, you know, as knitters, we're like, duh, that's a store-bought sweater. But uh, other people don't know. They can't tell the difference between a hand-knit sweater and a store-bought sweater. But, of course, we can. So I'm looking at this picture and I put it on Instagram and I was like, I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say that she's a knitter because that is a hand knit sweater unless someone made it for her. And 1 million people responded saying she is a knitter. Go follow her. She posts like her knits in her bio on Instagram. I'll link her Instagram below if you want to go follow her. She lists herself as a knitter before lawyer, which is like her job. <laughs> kind of an important one too. Uh, and I was just like, oh man, I just thought that was awesome. So I went and looked at her Instagram. She has customized a pressed flower cardigan, which is a pattern by, gosh, I know it, Christo Amy Christoffers, who's like, kind of like Kate Oates, you know, been around a long time, has designed a million things. If you go to her Ravel Amy Christoffers Ravelry page, she's got 13 pages of designs. So only some of them are under her own label. A lot of them are for Barocco. And that's just in the pages that I looked at. Probably there's other ones. Those are less interesting to me. They look very old school yarn company patterns. They're just not that interesting in my humble opinion. Uh, but the ones under her own label are really cool. So this is beautiful. I have to admit, I really... I'm not going to say I'd never seen this sweater before because I had seen it before, but I really hadn't looked at it before. And I was so impressed with the kind of knitter that Harmeet is. Oh my gosh. I mean, couture, couture. That's the kind of knitter she is. Perfection. She changed the sweater up a little bit. She made it longer. She added a shawl collar, 
She did two by two ribbing. I'm not sure what the pattern called for, maybe one by one or two by one. Uh, she hemmed the buttonholes. Now her buttonholes are gorgeous. I also do a whip stitch around my buttonholes and they don't look as amazing as hers. I'm not sure why. <laughs> she's just better than me. That's my guess. I think she's just better than me, which is totally fine. Um, but she like on her buttons, she sewed the button on and then on the back side of the button, she sewed a smaller button to give it structure and just general awesomeness, which was a total win. But all that aside, look at the label. She knit this label, which is, I'm guessing like, it's like, it looks like a business card size, like a two by three label. And it's got her initials and the year that she knit it. And it's got like a border. It looks like she just bound off in another color, I'm guessing, or I don't know how she did it, but wow. She is my new hero. I mean, amazing. And I, I've been wanting to talk to you guys about customization. We've, I've kind of talked around it a little bit, um, and I'm going to talk around it a little bit more. I have had this idea. So I don't want to say last winter because it was just a few months ago, like in January or something. I was out doing my walk and it was raining. So I wore my allotrope hat, which is a super bulky hat. And my head stayed dry. Like I got, it was the kind of thing where if I shook my head, sheets of rain would fly off of it. None of it penetrated the hat. And I was so amazed by that. Like just, wow. I mean, wool is amazing. It's designed to keep the sheep dry, right? And warm. Uh, but I was just so amazed by that. And as I was walking, I was thinking, I would love to knit a winter coat. Wouldn't that be awesome? If you knit it tightly enough with a, with a tight enough gauge, you could mimic a heavy woven fabric, I think. Uh, I'm not designing right now, but I thought if I, if I decided to undertake a project like that, it would be a fun thing to share with you on how I did it because you can make your own patterns. A lot of you commented on the sweater that I wore last week. I had a sweater on, by the way, but I just got too hot. So pardon my Gomer pile. <laughs> I've got like a, a shorts and a tank top on today. So anyway. It'd be really cool to walk through that process with you and kind of how you can make your own pattern. If you are familiar enough with basic knitting techniques and you've knit enough patterns, you can absolutely make what you want. Uh, so we'll see. I, I have not fully committed to that. You know, I've got the advent calendar. I've got a bunch of yarn clubs coming up next year. I've got the retreat in January. So there's a lot of big things coming up, but I might be able to, to sneak in this project. It would be really fun. We're going to add a new segment this week called in the wild. I keep seeing either on Instagram or in pictures that you guys email me, Nitty McPurley yarn and patterns in the wild. And I would love to share those with you. I kind of do that, but I don't do it on any particular segment. Well, here it is, new segment. Now, if you have shared a picture and I don't share it, it's either because I didn't see it or I forgot, okay? But it's definitely not because I didn't like it. So I that's my only hesitation in putting a segment like this in there is if I miss some, um, just send it to me again or be like, knock, 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 show my picture. <laughs> This picture came across my Instagram. This is Inspired Chick on Instagram. This is an Audrey sweater in bougie. And I feel like she married, it was the perfect marriage of pattern and yarn. And this is the Warsaw Worsted. And she looks so, so beautiful in it. Isn't it just perfect? I love it. She did such a good job. Also, um, a podcast watcher named Lori sent me these socks in March's color of the month, and she held the fingering weight double to make DK socks. So is that what she said? DK? Yeah, she said she held a double for DK. Now, I would have thought a fingering plus a fingering would make a worsted, but whatever, as long as they fit you, Lori. So she said she's going to have to wait a while to wear them, but she loves them. Aren't they so pretty? 
So she did two stripes at the top in the contrast color. It looks so, so good. Um, okay, on to the comment section. Marilyn said, hi there, Devin. Please pardon the gushy fan mail. I just received my order of the peony hand balm and the lemon eucalyptus. If you would kindly send a gallon of the peony, I would be immensely grateful. Marilyn, if you like the peony, you are going to love the porch. It's not the same smell. It's a different flower smell, but it's great. You're going to love it. I can't wait for you guys to smell it. It's so good. I've been a silent fan of your podcast for years and want to tell you how much I appreciate you being unafraid of speaking truth in love and unapologetically sharing the source of your strength in a world where that is increasingly unpopular. Love you, love your podcast and your creativity. You are richly blessed. Thank you so much, Marilyn. I get a lot of emails like this. Um, I feel blessed too. I feel blessed to have you guys. Because as you know, a couple of years ago, I almost quit, <laughs> as did many of you. Uh, and so the fact that here we are and we're together, it's great. Linda Spencer said, I loved your I forgot the bad parts when thinking about movies. I do too. One week after church, a lady asked my late teen daughters and I for a movie recommendation. We had recently watched something I'd enjoyed and I quickly recommended it to her. In the car on the way home, my daughter said she was shocked that I re recommended that movie to Mrs. P, the most conservative woman we know, as that movie has parts that I always fast forward through. She was right. I'd never watched those parts and I forgot all about them. Oops. Yes, that happens to me all the time. Die Hard? Oh my gosh. I love Die Hard, but we were watching it with my 11-year-old son and I was like, Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. <laughs> Love actually. Oh my gosh. No. Oh man. A Sparkle. Amy says, I always forget the inappropriate parts of movies too. She says, I know you are taking a break, hopefully not permanent from designing, but I hope you write a pattern for the sweater you are wearing. I think it looks amazing. Thank you so much, Amy. This next part of her comment is so her. I love it. She says, regarding whips, in the beginning of the year, I went through all the yarn closet and documented all of my whips. I made a spreadsheet with notes about my progress and what needs to be done to finish. I have 17 languishing whips, four items that need changes, and five items to frog. For those of you who don't know, to frog means to pull it out because rip it, rip it, rip it. Amy says, I hung the list on the door to my knitting room, and every time I go in there to pick something new, I review it. So far, I've completed four of the projects. I'm so close on a couple more. Lists are a good motivator and organization tool for me. I'm so happy to be making progress. I love that. The only shocking thing about this for me, Amy, is that you have 17 languishing whips. That feels like that's something I would do. <laughs> I feel like Amy's the one who makes the lists and she can't have any languishing whips because she just starts them and finishes them. But anyway, that's awesome. I love that. I actually do make lists all the time because I'm a visual person and I need to see it. Knitting Red says, I taught a coworker to crochet and got her the Woobles book off Amazon. It's cheaper than the kits if they already know how to crochet and have yarn and hooks. It has so many fun animals to make. That's a good tip. I didn't even know that there was a Woobles book. I'll have to look into that. Allison said, good afternoon this nice Sunday afternoon. I'm happy with the Saturday podcast. I'm happy with the Sunday podcast. I just want to watch your podcast any day. <laughs> she says, about the center pull ball. I have done both and either way is okay. I used to always pull from the center but I had so much trouble with having to hold my yarn and have my project would spin to unwind. Changing to pulling to yarn for the yarn from the outside, it's the same story. I still have to unwind my yarn. I don't know the solution. Before I read the next comment, I'll just say sometimes it's if you're knitting in the round, it's you you're doing it. You're just spinning it. Like especially with a, a sock or some a small circumference item, you're just turning it and turning it and turning it. You have to kind of turn it the other way a couple times and that can help. Another podcast commenter said Roxanne Richardson, who is a master knitter, 
has a video to explain center pull cakes and the twist in yarn. I will link that video below. And she said, I think Roxanne pretty much cleared up the problem. So I have not seen the video, but Roxanne is a genius. So I'm sure she knows about that. All right, knitting fantasies. So after seeing Harmeet's Press Flowers cardigan, I of course wanted to make one. So I went and looked at it. Amy Christoffers, right now her patterns are only available on Ravelry, but um, her own label is called Savory Knitting and that website is in progress. And she says that they're coming there soon. They're just not up yet. It's a lot of work. You don't think about it, but creating all the listings is a lot of work, it takes a lot of time. So right now they're on Ravelry if you want them, but they will be coming to her own website in some amount of time. So I learned on Ravelry when I went and looked that there are pressed flowers, socks, a pullover, a hat, a vest, a cowl, and a shawl. So let's go through these things so I can show you. The pressed flowers cardigan is lovely. You can see how different it is from Harmeet's. I like it a lot. It's a little bit big for me. I would probably make the smallest size and wear it a little bit more fitted. Um, there are pressed flowers socks that you can make in a fingering weight, which is nice if you love to knit socks and it's a small circumference. Um, I'll just briefly say, if you haven't knit this pattern, as I also haven't, this is a mosaic knitting pattern, which is so fun. You're always only holding one color of yarn and you just slip stitches to make the colors. So I was wondering, it looked mosaic to me, but I wasn't 100% sure. And then I, I found in one of these listings that it said it was mosaic. There is a pressed flowers pullover in a DK weight, a pressed flowers hat in a sport weight. Now, personally, I don't love a thin hat. I like a fat hat, but if you live somewhere that doesn't get that cold, a thin hat is good. There's a pressed flowers vest, which if you look at the Pat, if the picture's up close, the details and the edges are beautiful, um, but I, I don't like a boxy vest. I don't love the boxy shape on a lot of these. I would want to knit them smaller so that they just pulled in a little bit. Okay, the cowl is my favorite. This is so pretty. It is in DK, and I love how it looks like the flowers have fallen to the bottom. It's just so cool. She didn't just put the flowers everywhere. I love that. And finally, there is a pressed flower shawl in DK weight. So if you're interested in working this mosaic pattern, you have many, many choices. Um, the hat is probably the easiest, quickest. That's like a one day project. Everything else would take a little bit longer, but the cowl also would be pretty quick, I think. Uh, and because that's in a DK weight too. Gosh, I love it. So um, I was looking at her patterns and I also found this one. This is the Acer cardigan. I love it. I literally want to cast this on right now. And now that I know that Amy has 17 languishing whips, I kind of feel like that's tacit permission for me to go cast on a sweater that I have no business casting on. <laughs> I just love it. I love the fit. I love that it's worsted. I love the cables. It's just great. I haven't looked at the construction. I don't know how this is constructed, but I think it is gorgeous. Okay, moving right along to, so here's what happened. Um, normally, I present knitting stories in the order that I get them, but I'm bumping this one because it is germane to the topic of the week, which is changing patterns to make them work for you slash making up your own patterns based on your knowledge. And this story comes from Rachel and I would like to just give Rachel a big fat thanks for being so awesome because she has contributed several stories and they are always great. 52 stories per year, folks. So I need, send them to me. If you have a knitting story, send it to me. Devin with an I at knittymcpearly.com. Um, I would love to hear from you. Also, send me your pretty things that you want to show me and you'd love to have in On the Wild. I would love to share those. Rachel says, On Memorial Day, I was in my closet looking at my sweater bin and a flash of magenta caught my eye. 
I pulled out a cardigan that I knit several years ago that had fallen, fallen to the bottom of the pile for over a year. I don't remember the yarn I used, but the pattern is Grace by Jane Richmond. It's a lovely raglan crew neck cardigan with a simple lace pattern across the yoke. I really enjoyed wearing it again and started thinking about another one. Where do you live, Rachel? You needed a sweater on Memorial Day. Although we have had a couple of cool days here. Today is hot though. I literally had on my Wise Owl Knit sweater, sunflower, sunflower tea. Sunflower? I think so. <laughs> the Wise Owl Knits one. I, I had that one on and I went outside and I started to melt into a puddle. And so I changed into my, you know, moonshining outfit. <laughs> okay, Rachel said, I examined the construction and figured out it's top down and you go back and pick up stitches. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. I guess she just forgot, like you knit it, but you forgot. So you were looking at the construction to remember how you did it. You go back and pick up stitches along the fronts and neck for the button band and collar. Well, after knitting dozens of featherweight cardigans years ago with this construction, me too, me too. I pretty much loathe picking up hundreds of stitches for button bands and collars. So I started thinking, what if I start with the collar and work down from there? Why not? You absolutely can. You can start at this arm and work your way across. You can do whatever you want. A few years ago, I stumbled across the Eva Cardigan by Coco Knits, which has an interesting construction that involves working a ribbed collar using Judy's magic cast on and then incorporating it into the fronts to become a button band that is worked at the same time as the body. Tin Can Knits has a sweater like this. I knit one for Gigi a long time ago. It was one of those beginner sweaters. Anyway, Rachel says, I also learned about lifted increases and I like them so much that I replaced all increases and other patterns that I knit with those. Fair enough. Fairly recently, I learned about the long line cardigan by Hohi Locatelli, which is a top down set in sleeve construction that starts with a very wide ribbed collar at the bottom of which you pick up stitches that become the fronts, shoulders, and back. Cool. And thus, my idea was born. Could I start the cardigan with the Eva collar, which I modify to be twisted ribbing, and pick up the number of cast-on stitches according to the grace pattern in the same manner that the long line pattern calls for? Yes, I can. I modified the numbers a bit to accommodate the way I do my increases and off I went. Wow, Rachel is hardcore. She does not shirk from a challenge. She does not shirk a chat, shrink. She does not shrink from a challenge. She does not shirk a challenge. Okay, Rachel says, all was going well for about 30 rows when I realized I missed three increases on the right front. I hemmed and hawed and decided to fudge it and keep going. Rachel's the same one who had the fading point shawl where she had to rip it out all those times. Until I got to row 41 and realized I made a mistake from which I could not recover. So with a huge sigh, I decided to rip back to the pickup row and start fresh. This actually allowed me to fix something else that I wasn't quite happy with. Isn't that nice? I'm back to row 11 and I'm about to start the modified neck increases. Modified because I'm altering the neckline to be a V-neck instead of a crew neck. So far, the second time is going well. So if the pattern you really like, if, the if there is a pattern that you really like, but you don't enjoy certain aspects of it, be brave and experiment with things you like to do to create your own masterpiece. And this is a picture of her start. It's really, really cool. It looks like it's gonna be gorgeous. That yarn is really pretty. Um, I love the pattern. Even the stitch markers are beautiful. That is awesome, Rachel. You, you really can do it. You really can. Especially if like, and she called this the Franken sweater because it's like, you know, all these different patterns kind of stuck together to make one sweater. Um, but you can totally do that. You absolutely can. I, I think we need to make the winter coat. It's a little early, maybe in a couple of months. Maybe when I get the advent calendars done, I'll start that project and some of these other projects. 
All right, knitters, thank you so much for joining me. If you want an advent calendar, go to my website and grab one. Like I said, this usually it takes about a week for them to sell out because I do make a lot, but a lot of people want them. Thank you for wanting them. I really appreciate that. And thank you for being flexible because I my original plan was to do more ornaments like I did last year, but I just was like, that's just not going to work for me this year with the um, retreat coming up and everything else. I just thought it needs to be something different. So I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be great. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye knitters.